I am a little bit late on this one. I am Couch Coop. This came out on the 14th of December. It's the official update PlayStation 5 version of The Witcher 3. The Wild Hunt. It sits on the SSD. It's absolutely beautiful. We're going to break it down, compare it to the original, but more importantly, just find out exactly what's changed. How much of a visual increase are we seeing? I should probably look into this a bit further, but I cannot access my bought DLC that I own through the original PlayStation 4 version with this at the moment and I can't access the cross save data either. This is, I think, due to the fact that I don't have a paid PSN account on this original profile because I'm having to start from the beginning, everything continue, load game is all blanked out. But we'll get to that later. We are looking at a performance mode, beautiful pan round, completely smooth, very impressed with the effects and assets on that standard performance mode, locked 60 frames per second. It's also got quite a cool dynamic scaling on it to make it almost look 4K. I was quite impressed with the performance mode's resolution to be fair, and the 60 frames per second is beautiful and pegged right. <laughs> now, the ray tracing mode. That 30 frames per second is a little bit touch and go because when you whack it on immediately, you get this initial judder with it. It smoothens itself out, obviously, but you can straight up feel, especially on this pan, that it's slightly juddery. So it might be oscillating between 25 and 30 sometimes. It's a shame that's not locked, to be fair. I had a little trot around within the ray tracing mode at this 30 frames per second to see what happens when you start getting into busy forest areas or how that light hits things and whether those shadows are drastically different. The answer to those questions is it's beautiful, really picturesque, and you can blatantly see all this new tech working within a map that you're very familiar with prior to the update it's awesome to see this ray tracing work well the witch has got some of the best water forests and foliage in it of any open world game on earth so having that all ray traced is priceless it's just that this 30 fps is a little bit of an empty promise this playstation 5 update doesn't just come with two performance modes it also has got some integral changes on base game especially with the position of the third person character and how close they are to camera that's quite drastically changed i do like it as i say it's more cinematic if you have a bigger silhouette on camera i also put in the torch to see how this ray tracing is working in combat whether that 30 frames per second suffers badly and the good news is it doesn't in combat dip at all it's probably something that's happening in that open world with invisible load screens and moving around a lot that torchlight and the shadows the extended shadows and the cinders from the igni power you definitely know that you're playing a quality mode in this game but whether it sits up with the top three best quality modes on the playstation 5 which i'll talk about at the end of the video is another kettle of fish let's do some mode comparison left hand screen is the ray traced quality mode and we can see a lot is going on with mist detailed reflections god rays everywhere it's very beautiful the right hand screen is the performance mode still holds up pretty well with some of these advanced effects i feel it is probably my preferred mode and that's because of this 30 fps issue the resolution in that performance mode sits at about 1548p so it's not 4k but it's certainly not 10 80 and I like its dynamicism. Talking of dynamicism, here's that original Witcher over on the right hand side of the screen on my PlayStation 5. You can see that horse distance character pulling on the camera and also the effects just going crazy over on that left hand screen. Absolutely stunning stuff when you hold these two versions up against each other. This is the performance mode combat and probably the preferred mode to be in combat in. What I have enjoyed about this update is that they've gone over a lot of the enemy models again, given them higher textures, everything's got loads more detail on it that carries through into the attacks and of course with some of this advanced lighting and high textures, it just looks incredible. That also brings me on to some of the changes that we've seen with the control system. Run is now been moved off the face buttons and you just seem to have a slight user-friendly interface now. A lot of that equipment interface was a bit backward in the original Witcher 3. It isn't completely been revamped, but it's just more common sense button intuition have been used, especially with a lot of the simple everyday actions and inputs. Durban now. 
I wanted to talk about the base game original Witcher being played on a PlayStation 5 because it did come with some boosts. It ran at a 1080 locked 60 frames per second. I remember it being a game that narrowly missed a list that I made which was basically top backwards compatible PlayStation 4 games on the 5 that don't sit on the SSD. The Last of Us 2 is on there. The game that came really high on that list was Remnant from the Ashes which runs at a flat 4K at 60 frames per second and I'm quite stunned that we don't get to see The Witcher 3 in the PlayStation 5 update running at 4K and 60 frames per second. Two of the other very noticeable things are a complete lack of pop-in on the PlayStation 5 update. Absolutely amazing stuff. And the haptics work relatively well. Because this game's got quite a lot of detective and sort of looking through visions, feeling for vibrations and buzzes when you get closer to things, the haptic actually really helps with that. Let's get back to comparisons with the original game. And remember me talking about the character model being closer to the screen this gives the combat so much more oomph and have a look at the feet and the water effects as well you've also got quite a lot of reflection and glow happening it's almost a different game when you really start looking at how big these changes are with a lot of that character control and screen position it also seems to have very much richer HDR in it with deeper blacks and starker colors. It's stunningly beautiful when you're trotting around the forest like this. It just really pulls you out of the immersion when that damn 30 frames per second decides to dip to 15 for a bit. It must get worked on and I'm pretty sure it will because this game needs to be enjoyed in 4K and with beautiful ray tracing. I think going forward I'm going to stick with the performance mode. I was speaking about the three games that I actually love the quality modes on and they are of course Horizon Zero Dawn, Grand Theft Auto 7 and the impeccable God of War Ragnarok. All of which feature in my Game of the Year video of 2022. I recommend hopping onto that. You've still got time before the end of the year. I have of course been Couch Coop and apologies for sounding a little gruffer than usual. It is Christmas party season here in the UK and I have got High on Life downloading in the background. That will be my next video review also. See you down there. Not so fast, Roach. 